Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a game using Canvas. I'm going to talk about how it's different from making a game in just a world space. The game that I'm going to be creating is this word to image match game. But the mechanics that are used here are same as what I used for creating a wire task from Among Us. So if you want to see the process how to create this type of game in the world space and then compare it to how you create it in Canvas, I'll leave a link in description. You can check it out. I'm not going to go through a whole setup of how to add these elements, but I'll just tell you how I did it. So for my Canvas, I have two groups, so the image groups. And if I disable those, those are the three images here. And I just use a grid layout group to space them evenly. And I did the same thing for text. So I just created a group and just named those. So that's the approach that I went about doing that. Then I have another text right here that is displaying how much of the matches you did out of total. And then the last thing is the good job text once you complete all of them. So that's the setup that I have here. Now, a little bit about Canvas. There are different settings for Canvas that you can use, and it's actually going to change the behavior and how you go about creating your game. So what I mean is, if you look right here at Canvas in the inspector, under render mode, the default mode for Canvas is actually screen space overlay. And this is what I went ahead and used in this game. Now, there are two other modes. And for both of those, you need to actually connect it to a camera that is going to be rendering it. And once you connect this canvas to a camera, that enables the Raycast to work with your mouse. What I mean is you can use regular events like on mouse click and on mouse drag to actually interact with those elements. If you are in screen space overlay, you have to use the event system handlers. I'll be showing that in a little bit, but they work a little bit different than how the on mouse events work. So let's leave the setting to screen space overlay and let's start working with our project. You can see that I've created two scripts here, match item and match logic. Match item script is connected to every single item. And by item, what I mean is all of these items that I have here. So either it's a word or an image, that's going to be a match item and they have a script. In the script, there's two settings. There's a line prefab. The line is just a white image and I can use it to stretch it to create that line look. So that's the game object setup that I have here. Now let's go and take a look at that match item script. And right away at the top, we can see that I'm using the Unity Engine event system. And that's where these interfaces for the pointer handlers are. So there's a lot of handlers in the event system. And the ones that you actually want to use, you need to specify them here. If I add another handler, let's say pointer click handler, I actually have to implement this interface for the error to go away. And you see that currently it's underlined with an error. So if I go right here in the quick action, I can use this option for implement interface. And what that does is it adds that method that I need to implement for the interface. So this is how a typical pointer handler looks like. It has the event name on pointer click and the input is actually a pointer event data. So you can actually look up more information about the event itself. Now I'm not going to use the pointer click in this script. So let's remove that handler. And the ones that I'm using right now are on pointer down. So whenever you click the mouse down on pointer drag, it just comes as drag handler and then on pointer enter and on pointer up. I'm going to walk you through exactly what I'm using it for. But right here at the top, I have four variables that I have here. The first one is a static variable and it's a hover item. I'll talk about this one and explain it a little bit later in the video. But the settings that you've seen for this script are right here. So I have a public game object line prefab and that's how I connect the line prefab so I can draw that line between those two matches. Then I have the string name. So this item name is what's used to confirm that match. And then I have one private variable and it's actually a line. So once I instantiate a new line, I set it to this private variable so I can have reference to it. So the first event that occurs in this game type is actually once you press down on one of those items. And for that, I use on pointer down. 
Now I have the wire script for the wire task that I did. And if you take a look here, I don't actually use on mouse down. The first one that I used was on mouse drag and the other one is on mouse up. So if you actually use these events on mouse drag and on mouse up in the canvas on one of the UI elements, if the canvas is actually not connected to a camera, meaning that you have the render mode set to screen space overlay, those on mouse events won't actually work. So you have to use the pointer events instead. And that's what I'm using here. So on pointer down, what I do is I instantiate uh, that line because by default, I don't have a line for each of these items. I create them once they're needed. That's all it does. It just creates that line, instantiates it. It positions it at the transform position. That is the position of the item that you clicked. And then for rotation, I pass in quaternion identity. And for the parent, actually, I need to specify the parent to be inside the canvas. Otherwise, since I'm using an image component for my line, it will not actually show if I'm not going to put it inside of a canvas. So that's what the transform parent parent. That's how I instantiate this item inside of the canvas. Once I instantiate that line, I run the update method and the update method is right here at the bottom. Update line is really close to what I had for the wire as well. So there is a little difference between them, but the idea is the same. Now for the update line, you can see that I'm passing the event data dot position. And technically I could have used the input dot mouse position and passed that. But since I have the position available under the event data, that's what I decided to use for the position. Now the position is in screen space. If you're creating the game in the world space, you're going to have to use the camera to convert the screen space to world space so that you can actually make that conversion for the position. Since I'm in screen space, I don't have to do that. I can just use the position straight up. And right here, I calculate the direction. So position minus the transfer position. The transfer position is the starting position of the line. And that gives me a vector in which that line needs to be pointing. So I use this direction to set it to line transform right. So it turns my line into the direction that I calculated here. To stretch the line to the length that I'm looking for, I'm also using the line transform local scale and I'm setting it to direction magnitude. So in this case, the direction magnitude is going to be the same thing as the distance between the start point and my current position. The other values are one, one. And the reason why it's actually stretching correctly and not stretching in both direction is because one of the settings that I did for the line. So under line inside here, if you take a look at the rectangular transform for the pivot in the X, I have it set to zero, which makes the image to be pivoted at one side. And that makes the scaling work perfectly in this case. So that's the update line logic. So if you want to see a little bit more information and in depth, how it all works, maybe check out the wire task. I might have given more information in there, but let's go on and look at the drag. And right here, I have the second handler and it's the drag handler. So on drag, what I do is just update the line. So use the event data and send in the position, which is the same thing that we just walked through. So this logic right here is what's responsible for actually starting that line and drawing it. Now the logic for checking if you connect it to the correct item is right here. So these two methods that are responsible for that. So let's first take a look at this on pointer inner. So if you're not sure what on pointer inner is, all it does is basically when you hover over one of the items, that event gets triggered. If there's a script that is listening for that object, since the script is attached to all of these objects, I've just added this on pointer inner. And the reason for this event is because I need to know to which item you are connecting this line. Now, again, back to the wiring and how I did it there was by using the overlapping circle. So I was doing a physics 2D test. Each time there was a mouse drag detected, I was making that physics call to check if there's another object that I'm colliding with. 
Now, when you're in Canvas, I could have done the same approach and actually used that as well, adding colliders to these images and then doing that same physics test. But a simpler way of doing it is actually listening for the on pointer enter and using that for detecting which item you are over. So on pointer over, all I do is store this, which is the matching items to the hover item. And right here at the top, it's a static variable, which allows me to access this variable from other match item scripts. I don't have to have a reference to any other objects. I can just check this static variable here and this static variable here, it will store the last match item that the pointer was over. Once I have that second object stored, I can listen for the next event and it's on pointer up when you release your mouse. Now in here, the first thing that I check is to make sure that the hover item is actually not this, meaning in here, if you click on heart and you release it right on top of it, if I didn't do that check for checking if it's this, then it will assume that you have connected it correctly. To prevent that from happening, I'm checking for the hover item to actually not match the item that I started this pointer down event on. If it's not the same, then I can check if the item name is equivalent to the hover item item name. So if those names are a match, that means that the match was done correctly and I can continue with the logic. So again, for the last time, I update the line by providing the position of that hover item. So it connects it directly to the center of that item. And then I destroy the scripts. So destroy hover item, which is the match item script. And that prevents it from you ever interacting with it again and destroy this script as well, which is also the match item script. Now right here, I run another method and it's the match logic at point. And that's what's used to count that score at the top. Now I probably should move it above the destroy so that we add the points before I destroy the script. So that's what happens when you have a successful match. Now, if one of these conditions is not true, then I'm going to just destroy the line, which is just going to remove that line object that I created here. Probably not the most efficient thing you can do, but there isn't much of items that are being created and destroyed here. Let's go take a look at the match logic inside here. I do use a singleton here. That's why I can do match logic dot add point. Now, the only thing that this match logic is doing is basically counting the points. So I have the max points and that's how much possible matches you can make, which is three. Then I have the points text, which is this one right here at the top and level complete UI is that good job game object saying good job. And then a private variable, which keep track of the points. So on start, what I do is just set this to the instance. That's how I initialize here. And then inside here, I have another method that just updates that text, but the update text happens here. So points over max points. And in here, I also do the check for points equal max points. If that's true, then I enable the level complete UI by setting it active. So it's a game object. So whenever I set it active, it turns on and displays that right here. I have two static methods. If you call the add point one, it's going to call the add points one and pass one for it. So just an extra thing that I did here and the add points is the one that actually does all the logic. So in here I receive the points and then use the instance dot points and add those points to the points that I already have stored in here as a private variable. After I add those points, the last thing is I run the instance update point text which does that logic for checking and updating the UI. That is the logic behind this game right here. And this is basically how you can use canvas to actually create this kind of gameplay. I hope you guys found some helpful information in this video. Make sure you click on the like button if you did. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.